if you can see this. I can't see it right now. I, the sun is pretty bright out here. This is the hottest part of our property. It's really, really hot back here. And it's direct sunlight and it's reflection off of the white wall. So everything back here gets really hot. This is my little miracle plant. This is a honeysuckle, Japanese honeysuckle. And I when I bought it it was kinda it it was ninety percent off. <laughs> and I watered it really good and it came back while it was still in the pot. Once it came back in the pot, I planted it out here and I don't know if you can see that's wet. See that? In this spot two years ago, this is where we kept our goats for over winter. And so the straw and the manure built up and then decomposed over the next two years. So this is the best spot on my ground as far as fertility and water retention. Um, the reason this is my little miracle plant is that honeysuckles don't like direct sunlight. They don't like heat. And... Um, you can see that it's trying to die at the same time that it's trying to live, but it's living. <laughs> so this is what permaculture can do for you. I haven't watered this plant in a month because it doesn't need it. The, the ground underneath the straw is completely damp. It doesn't need water. As it gets really super hot, it kind of crinkles in on itself a little bit, but the fact that you see green, non-crunchy leaves means that it will survive. So in the future, I wouldn't put a honeysuckle out in my backyard because it is so hot. I'd put it under something that would give it a little shade. But the fact that it's surviving here is a testament to the permaculture. The other one, my chickens keep getting in and taking up its root. Ah! So I need to put some more dirt on it anyway, on its root. Um, the other thing is... I have a tree in the front that is crunchy leaf. This tree was planted at the same time and it gets water maybe once a month and it is back here in the backyard again where it's like the face of the sun. And then here's my tomatoes that don't get watered at all. And they're huge. In this area this is where we had our miniature cow, not last winter, but the winter before. So it had manure and straw layered on it and then left to rest for, for one year. And then this is where I planted these new trees. So these trees should not be doing this well for the fact that I don't water them. Because I planted them in the fall, and it's super hot back here. But they're just fine. No water. I water them once a month just because it makes me feel better. <laughs> not because they're actually asking for it. And then I do have tomatoes on my little, I don't know, can you see them? Maybe you can't see them. I can't really tell if you can see them because, again, the sun is so bright out here. Again, these are non-watered tomatoes. These are just in the spot that I had my miniature cow over winter two years ago. And the other thing I wanted to show you was, these are my little raised beds that I did as permaculture, and you can see that the bindweed has taken over. This right here that you see, this little strip, this was where I had my peas this year, and you can see even back here, they're still producing, and they they haven't been watered. So you can see that they're green, they're happy, unwatered peas out here on the face of the sun, hottest place that I have, and yet here they are, they're... They're three months old. I planted these ones in, the, in early spring. And without water, out here in the permaculture, as, these were protected from chickens until this morning. I took these off the, the cage off this morning. You can see still peas. Just, they're snow peas too. Kaya! Kaya! Come here. So I'm going to have my daughter eat these so the chickens don't get to them. But you can see they're snow peas. They're not fibrous. They have plenty of water in them. So if you've seen Back to Eden, this is just another version of Back to Eden. But you can see that where I did disturb the soil, look, here's some more. They're just handling it just fine back here. Hey, okay, come have some peas because I've only got one hand and I don't want the chickens to get them. See, and you can even see little blossoms. Not sure if you can see that because I can't tell where my hand is. Okay, there's even blossoms. Make sure to eat all these, okay? There's a whole bunch in here. Don't let the chickens get them. Anyway, 
So anywhere that I disturb the soil, I get bindweed. But I didn't have this heavy mulch. So the difficulty is not with the mulch, the difficulty is with when you move the mulch. And I did come in here and weed quite a bit this year. But you can see I have strawberries in there that don't get watered. I have, I can't remember what those are, poppies? And I have a lemon balm and a dill. And then in there I have some other things that the bindweed just took over. So anywhere that you move the mulch, the bindweed comes in. And this is a onion that went to seed. But you can see that anything that can get started, and then if you can put the mulch back around it, it'll take off. So, anyway, there we go.